Hey guys, Matt with Voltner Woodworking. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna take a design from the internet, move it into Photoshop 2020, and then we're gonna export it into Retina Engrave 3 without your laser being on. If you got a full spectrum muse like me, this video is perfect for you. Once we've exported a Retina Engrave 3, we can run it at any time. Go back and fire up your laser and you're ready to go. So I hope you enjoy the video. Make sure you like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell so you can stay notified for when we put new videos out. If you got any pointers, make sure you leave a comment in the section below. It's way too hot in this shop, so let's get inside and get started. We're in Adobe Photoshop 2020, and you can grab a graphic from any number of sources. Uh, I happen to grab one from the internet, and so what we're going to do is take that and put that here into Photoshop and manipulate it a little bit and we're gonna make it fit for purpose. What we're gonna do is, uh, because we're gonna be using Retina Engrave, I like to do all of my work here in Photoshop. You can use Illustrator or any number of programs for your editing. But we're gonna go ahead and get started. I've already grabbed the uh, clip from the internet. I like to make my template just a little bit larger. So we'll go ahead and bump this up just a little bit. That way I've got a little bit of room on the outside of the graphic. So create that and I'm going to hit command V on the Mac. So here's the graphic and we are going to make it where all the text is going to come out of this graphic and it's going to be a black and white image. So that way when we go to engrave it, it is just going to take the black. So first thing is I want to find out what font this is. So select it using the marquee tool, come up to type, match font. And what it's going to do is going to search through available fonts. All right, take this first one. I think that is going to look pretty close. Just looking at that S is what I'm using as a comparison. So the S in Davidson and that first S. So we'll take that. And come over here to the text. And we're gonna type out the name that I want is Winters. Okay, it's showing that the color is white. You can color match that. What I want to do is clear out anything inside this area. So I'm going to take the marquee tool, make sure that I've got the right layer selected down here, and delete that out. We're using the eyedropper tool. I'm going to select the black. Go ahead and use my paint bucket and that way it will clear out that area come back over to winters and what we're going to do is now you can e either change the font here or just double click it you can make it you know as big as you want to get it kind of ready there maybe 150 yeah that looks pretty good so then I'm gonna kind of center this all right now I want this to fill the whole area and what you see is I've got this set over here to 200 I went ahead and did that ahead of time what well, that's doing is it's stretching out the, the text a little bit. So let's go ahead and I want to take out most of this area here. There you go, it's right in the center. 
there you go. So you got the last name. Now what we want to do is take out motorcyclist. This is going to go on a cutting board. And so we don't necessarily want um, the motorcycles to show up. So we're just going to actually just black out this whole area. So just take your paint tool. And fill all those areas. Pretty simple task. I'm going to reverse the colors. And this orange here, I'm going to make white. So basically anything that's black, I want to keep black. Anything that's white, I'm sorry, anything that's a color, I'm going to make white. So get all these gray areas. And there you have it. So we are ready to take this and dump this into Retina Engrave. So what I would do is flatten this by hitting shift and grabbing both layers and merge layers. That way when I get ready to either select it this way or hit control or command A and command C to copy, then we can go ahead and dump that into Retina Engrave. Okay, so with your browser open, I'm using Chrome. Go ahead and type in FS for full spectrum, fslaser.com forward slash RE3 forward slash. It'll bring you to this page and it uh, will show the software that's available. Talk about the key features and they've got some different tutorials and examples. And if you ever get stuck, there's the manual and guides down here at the very bottom. Go and scroll back to the top, hit try now on this Retina Engrave V3. And what it's going to do, it's going to open up the software as you would see it on your machine. You'll have to log in and then it's going to give a disclaimer. Make sure that you've got the right system selected. So I'm using the Muse Core, but if you're using any one of the Pro Series, you can still use the software. Go back to our graphic, which we've already selected. Hit Command C for the Mac or Control C for Windows. That's going to copy the graphic, and then come over here and click on any of, in anywhere in the white space here. Command V or Control V for Windows, and it's going to go ahead and post this graphic in here. So now what you're going to want to do is you want to know what size that you're going to want this graphic. So the area that it's saying, it's expanding the whole area and it's giving it a width of 20 inches. This is going on a cutting board and so I want the graphic to be six inches and it's going to be in the lower corner. What it did there is it just squished it because we didn't have this button checked here. So if you get stuck, then you can always undo or delete, re-import. So make sure that's checked. And I want the width to be six inches. So it auto resizes. And just to get positioning and see how it's gonna look, my cutting board is actually gonna be about 20 inches in length and it's gonna be just over 13 and a half inches in width. So that's gonna look great. I've got a juice groove on it, so I'm gonna bump it up and then I can look at it and see how it's gonna look in relation to the whole board. And I think that looks pretty good. So if you're gonna want a vector, then you can use the tracing parameters to do a vector. Uh, for what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to put it on um, threshold and go with a thousand DPI, which is going to give it a really crisp look. And you can, your system is going to be a little bit different for your uh, for your particular engraver. 
And so what I would recommend you doing is going and grabbing one of the templates that's available to run a test on your system to see what depth you're gonna want, uh, what kind of power, what kind of uh, look you're going for. If you're unsure of the settings for your particular laser, go to laser101.fslaser.com slash material test. There you'll see a series of files that you can download and run on your machine. You can also track these as your material changes. They've also provided step-by-step -step instructions. I reference this chart from time to time, so that way I know what settings to begin with, and then as my laser gets older and has more use in it, I may need to adjust those settings. I'd recommend that you go ahead and keep a log close to your laser so you know what settings to use. Referencing the settings for your specific machine, go ahead and enter the values here. For this particular engraving, I'm actually going with 1000 DPI on full threshold, 35 for power, and 50 for speed. You can run a calculation by hitting estimate job time. This particular job will run 13 minutes and 32 seconds. When you're ready to export, simply go to File, Export Project to File, and it will automatically download. Now I'm connected to my Muse using the IP address. And what I can do is get ready to import my file. Go File, Load Project from File. Navigate to your file location and hit open. All right, so the project is loaded and it should have grabbed all your settings, but it's always good to just make sure. So we've got the threshold, 1000, 1000 DPI, 35 for power, 50 for speed. What I'm gonna do is take a picture of my work surface. That way I can line up my placement. Okay, we're all set. And it looks like the juice groove is lower than I anticipated. So what I'm gonna do is move this. And I think that's gonna look pretty good. I like to run a perimeter check and I just ran a perimeter check and noticed that it was cutting into the, the cherry section. And so what I wanna do is move the whole graphic up into the maple section so that way there's no inconsistencies in the engraving. Once you're done running the perimeter check and you've verified everything, you're ready to go. Go ahead and set up your machine, make sure you're well ventilated and hit run.